You know, at my age, a good long shag means only one thing. Carpeting. <laughs> I'll tell you, it's the ugliest roll in the store. They thought they'd never unload it, so I got it at a great price. <laughs> They're so happy to get rid of it, they even lent me this forklift to take it home. <laughs> they must think I'm nuts, but they're wrong. I'm not crazy, I'm lazy. <laughs> This week, we're all getting ready for the Possum Lodge barbecue games. That's where all the members bring in their game and we barbecue it. <laughs> now, I was supposed to get the barbecue sauce, but you know, the stuff that you buy is watered down, it's overpriced. Plus, I, I forgot to get it. <laughs> so instead, I went down the basement, mixed up my own. I call it Red's Hot Sauce. <laughs> Pretty spicy, I'll tell you. My slogan is, who says men never cry? <laughs> it was either that or wind at my back. Hey, Red. Yeah. Harold's looking for the barbecue sauce. He wants that mild honey mesquite. Oh, no, no, no. We're going another way this year, Don. Red's hot sauce. Oh, really? Yeah. Oh, what's in it? Uh, mainly ketchup, but there's some other stuff. I got mustard and jalapenos and cayenne and wasabi and horseradish in there. And I got some allspice. I got a secret ingredient and one really moist prune. Wow. Yeah. Geez, it looks great. Yeah. What's the secret ingredient? Even I don't know, to be honest. <laughs> you know, there was this can of blue gooey stuff at the back of the pantry, so I, you know. <laughs> uh, mind if I have a taste? No, no, not that way, not huh? that way. Whoa, 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 whoa. Here. Put a little bit on a toothpick and try that. Oh. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, uh. Well. Yeah, yeah. You know, that prune gives it a nice... <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, boy. Yeah. Whoa! Yeah. Whoa! Yeah, yeah. Yeah. That's good. That's yeah. really good. Yeah. Have you got a problem or something? Because my loins are overheating. <laughs> I'm here for the barbecue sauce. What's this? That's barbecue sauce. That's barbecue sauce? Very much so. <clears throat> OK. It doesn't look like mild honey mesquite. No, no, it's something a little different. Very much so. <laughs> Harold, you're the one always complaining that I never try anything new. <laughs> OK. What? Nothing. No, no, nothing good. It's good. Go. Oh, good. It's good. will be playing for this gorgeous necklace from Diamond Joe's Discount Jeweler and Hog Fat Rendering Plant. At Diamond Joe's, we put pearls before swine. Okay, cover your ears there, Dalton. Reggie, you've got 30 seconds to get Dalton to say this word. 
Draw. Draw. Yeah, all right, Winston. Okay, and go. Okay, Dalton, when two people do battle and neither one comes out ahead, that's called a... Marriage. <laughs> no, 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 I'm, I'm saying... This is something that's a dead heat. It's a... Honeymoon. <laughs> no. Okay, okay, no. Okay, pretend Anne-Marie comes home in a bad mood. Pretend? <laughs> no, no, okay, but, but you want to make her feel good, so you turn on the tap in the bathtub and you... Drown myself? <laughs> okay, okay, okay. This is another word for taking money out of your bank account. T <laughs> taking money out of my bank account. <laughs> That's a good one. <laughs> Red, uh, you yeah. almost had a time. Yeah, yeah, no, I know. <laughs> okay, okay, Dom. This is a four letter word, okay? But it's part of another word, okay? It's something you pull out in the bedroom. because it's time for Harold's Hobby House. Okay. My first guest today, my first guest today, he's a hobbyist, and he's also the owner of the local um, uh, the craft supply store here in town. It's, it's the Hot Dog Hobby Shop. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, he's living his dream. Please welcome my first guest, Mr. Frank Kepke. Well, welcome, Frank. Thank you, Harold. Uh, some of your viewers may know me as that fellow who makes handy household items using only hot dogs. Wow. <laughs> now, why hot dogs? Well, it's cheaper than lumber. <laughs> really, because, you see, I would think that a 4 by 8 sheet of wiener would actually cost more than plywood. No, no, not if you buy in bulk and very close to the expiry date. <laughs> then you can make something like this. It's a dog food dish made entirely out of hot dogs. Perfect for wiener dogs. I love wiener dogs. Well, I love the name. Oh, wiener dogs. Just, um, Frank, um, wouldn't, wouldn't the dog just eat the dish? No. I don't think so, no. Well, I, I do. I think the dog would just eat the dish. Uh, would all hot dog experts please raise their hands? Aha! I think a dog knows enough not to eat its serving dish. <laughs> For dogs? Dogs bark at their own reflections. They lick places I can't even say on TV. That's true. That's true. I'm pretty sure... I'm pretty sure I know dogs well enough to know that a dog would eat that dish and he'd, like, lick the floor and then wash it down with a big gulp of toilet bowl water. <laughs> <laughs> What else do you have for us, Frank? <laughs> well, nothing says romance like candles. And you just can't go wrong with these old beef candlesticks. <laughs> and the best part is, they're scented. Is that hickory? Yes, it is. I find so. It also comes in barbecue, garlic, Cajun, and jumbo. Which isn't a flavor, but it really impresses the ladies. <laughs> Oh, I also have something very special here. Ta-da! <laughs> Guess who that is? Sigourney Wiener? <laughs> that could be Sigourney Wiener. Mr. Stupid Hot Dog Head, I don't know. You know what? It's actually my fault, because I haven't quite finished it yet. His fault. That's just... That's the problem it. when it's his fault. Can't blame me. When I say it's my fault, I was just being polite. <laughs> oh. <laughs> That's me! We have a wiener! <laughs> That's good. The teenage years are painful, difficult, and awkward. And not just for the parents. <laughs> Especially if the teens get interested in hobbies like knocking over liquor stores or beating up the elderly. 
And the most dangerous stuff in life happens late at night, which you proved during their conception. <laughs> so the best way to prevent bad things from happening is to get your kids to come home at a decent hour. To do that, you need something to attract them. You know, other than the $5,000 worth of video games and computer equipment you bought them. You need a lure, a teen trap. See, when a teenager gets home, first place he goes is the fridge. A fridge door has magical powers that draws in all teenagers. Maybe it's from the magnets on there, I don't know. But the same kid who can't focus on the blackboard for 30 seconds will spend an hour bent over staring into this baby. So take that power and use it. On the front of your house. Now when your kid's out at night, dancing or throwing rocks at traffic or whatever, he'll remember this fridge door and he'll want to come running home to see what's inside. And here's an added bonus. He'll never be able to sneak into the house. They say that in a man's life, he will own at least 10 cars. Well, maybe not own, but at least make payments on. <laughs> Guys get different types of vehicles depending on their age and situation. At first, it's something sleek and sporty that says, I'm single and fast, and there's no room for a baby carriage in this unit. <laughs> but after a few miles and a bunch of service centers, things have changed. He's not a sports car anymore. What was once sleek and sporty is now meek and 40. <laughs> He's a minivan. But he doesn't call it a minivan. He calls it a magic wagon. <laughs> oh, sure. A rusted out dumpster on wheels is a magic wagon. <laughs> and dandruff is fairy dust. <laughs> the car you drive is a mirror of your own vitality. And have you looked in that mirror lately? Objects may appear older than they are. <laughs> Not pretty, is it? Big and slow, airbags everywhere, and a huge trunk. <laughs> but here's the good news. At this point, you don't need speed. You don't have very far to go, and you sure don't need to get there early. <laughs> Just relax, take your foot off the gas, and do what you've spent your whole life perfecting, coast. <laughs> Remember, I'm pulling for you. We're all in this together. You think Fear Factor's gross? I eat with these hands. Rothschild Sewage and Septic Sucking Services, where fear is not a factor. While the barbecue games were so successful, we're taking Red's hot sauce to a whole new level. We're going commercial. But it's not enough to have the product. You also have to have the marketing. I mean, where would Paul Newman's salad dressing be without Paul Newman, eh? Or Michelin tires without the big, fat, hairless, French albino marshmallow guy. <laughs> or, or, or Janet Jackson without the Super Bowl. <laughs> so our marketing gimmick is our packaging. It's a water pistol, huh? huh? Now you can spice up your steak without even getting up out of your lawn chair, huh? You can shoot your game twice. <laughs> and I got a new name for it. Red Saturday Night Special Sauce. <laughs> if you're going to a party, make sure you're packing heat. Uncle Red, Uncle Red, what is the secret ingredient in that sauce? I don't know, Harold. See, that's the beauty of it. Nobody knows. I went up to the university, I took this to the lab, and they've analyzed it, right? No, 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 Harold, wait a sec, wait a sec. The time has come. It's jet fuel. <laughs> wow. You cannot sell that sauce. People don't like blowing up. OK, first of all, that's a generalization. And secondly, we're not going to sell it as barbecue sauce. We're going to sell it as gasoline additive. <laughs> we're going to make a killing, Harold. Exactly. <laughs> We all agreed to meet up behind the lodge and fix the picket fence. Bill and Walter are going to help out. I don't know what the bale of straw is. I don't know. Guys, we're doing the picket fence. We're doing the... No, no, you agreed to... No, what's the straw? What's the bale of straw for? We don't need that. 
Okay, no, okay, they're gonna do some kind of archery. What are you, what are you doing there, Bill? I don't want to see that. What is that? He's got a... Wow. He's got a crossbow in his pants. Okay. Well, I'll just work on the fence myself. It's really not that much of a surprise, to be honest with you. He's got, what's he got? Oh, he's got another crossbow in his pants. Holy cow. So they get all set up. To me, it's a maturity thing. I just as soon do it myself as have a couple of goofballs like this working with me. And you always go, okay, yeah, you got, you got the arrows and everything. Look at the little kids. There we go. See how he became leader. Man. So I'm working away, trying to clean up the environment, and make this a better world for all of us. Meanwhile, they're goofing around and doing kind of a Charlie's Angels thing. Now the problem with the with the uh, crossbows is they're a little bit tricky, especially when you have no idea what you're doing. So Bill sticks an arrow in there, and then of course he doesn't he doesn't shoot. Now, you kids at home, don't even think of doing what Walter is about to do here. This is not how you check. No, this is not this is not a good idea. No, no, Walter, no, 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 no. no. Well, as it turns out, the safety was on. Now I see why. There we go. Okay. Now they're all set to go, and uh, whoops. Oh. All right. Okay. Let's see his money on a babysitter. And just okay. Now just get that out of there, Walter. Just yank it out. There we go. Okay. Now the thing with the bale of straw, I was concerned. I'm not sure it will stop. But these crossbows have a straight through and nails my hammer. And, uh, of course, these guys are oblivious, and they just keep firing, and the next thing you know, my paintbrush is jammed with an arrow through it. And now they start coming thick and fast. They get the mailbox there, and they're, they're starting to hit the picket fence with the with the arrow coming through, and next thing I, I lose my bouquet of flowers here. And so I'm thinking, I better get in the van and get some safety. They don't even realize that these things are going right through the bail of straw. You know? So I'm in the van thinking, oh, boy. Okay, but you think metal would stop one of these problems? Not so. Apparently not so. So now I'm thinking, you know, I should probably be fighting. Oh, there goes a tire. I should be fighting fire with fire at this point. So I uh, use a couple wheel discs to get back there. I decide to make my own uh, crossbow using the old picket fence, and there's one arrow coming their way. And here comes another one. And, uh, and then. Oh! This is fun. Oh! Hey, that's a touchdown. If you have to cut your grass more than three times a week, call Rothschilds. If your lawnmower disappears into a sinkhole, try our emergency number. Rothschild Sewage and Septic Sucking Services. Boy, I'll tell you, this gasoline additive is a real winner. Guys care a lot more about their cars than they do about their barbecues. <laughs> we changed the packaging, we got a new name. I'm calling it Red's Gas Attack. <laughs> I'm actually gonna play myself in the TV commercial. Dalton's just on his way over here right now to figure out how we can do it for free. But I tell you, man, oh man, everybody's car is running great. They're getting fantastic gas mileage. The only problem is the exhaust smells like a sirloin steak. <laughs> You know, like a, a dog will chase you for like 90 miles. <laughs> when I'm sitting there idling, fat guys start circling my vehicle. <laughs> Excuse me a minute. <laughs> oh boy. <clears throat> Red, I need to talk to you. What explosion? I didn't hear anything. <laughs> that was my car. That was my car with your gasoline treatment in it. That was the loudest backfire I've ever heard. Oh, sure, sure. It was exciting and it smelled a bit like ribs. But it blew my engine! Boy, that, that is unfortunate. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Now, what are you going to do about it? Well, uh, how about a lifetime supply of the... No! Oh, oh. No! All right, uh, well... Okay, I'll replace your car. What, what was it, anyway? Well, it was an 82 Reliant with less than 500,000 miles on it. Okay, I can get one, but you'll have to wait till garbage day. Meantime. <laughs> time. Yeah, oh. yeah. Lighten up, Dalton. Okay, the plan backfired, so did your car, but you didn't get hurt. Nobody was following you, were they? I don't think so, I don't know. Well, see? So there's no problem. Away you go. Go on. <laughs> Uncle Red! That's 
what you get for tailgating, Harold. <laughs> it's meeting time. I was an innocent victim in a barbecue sauce explosion. <laughs> you know, Harold, you're not the first virgin to be burned at the stake. <laughs> If my wife is watching, I'll be coming straight home after the meeting, and I am out of the barbecue business. I'm hoping maybe you and I can cook something up later now that I'm off the sauce. <laughs> and to the rest of you, thanks for watching. On behalf of myself and Harold and the whole gang up here at Possum Lodge, keep your stick on the ice. <laughs> Bow your heads for the man's prayer. I'm a man, but I can change if I have to, I guess. Okay, man, it's all over with the barbecue sauce and the fuel additive, because apparently the stuff blows up. So I would suggest you get that out of your gas tank immediately, unless your car is a rental. Thank <laughs> you.